Now, do you on your show you call yourself Frankie, right? Yes, I do. Okay, perfect. My real name. Okay. My real name is actually Sean, but everybody calls right. me Frankie. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, gotcha. er, hey, everybody. This is uh, Frankie Slauson, and welcome to another great edition of Frankie's. Uh, well, it's called Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture, but it's also the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTQ ninety one point three FM outside of. Uh, the studios are Rapid City, South Dakota, but I'm actually record, pre-recording this at my house, actually, uh, which is uh, a little ways uh, outside of Rapid City. But uh, I have with me uh, somebody who, while her work might not be that well known as far as uh, how independent she is as, as an actress, but there was something that she did that a lot of people will never forget. She was Slimer in Ghostbusters 2, and it's a very, very weird to even think about that there was actually a, a person in sli- in the body of Slimer, but she's going to tell you the story. I have with me Ms. Robin Shelby. How's it going, Robin? Hi, hi, Frankie. Nice to nice to talk to you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, you're you're only the third female I've ever uh, ever interviewed since I started doing interviews. I am honored. Are you serious? Yeah, I've. Uh, it's always been kind of a guy show, more or less. Okay, Frank. You need more women to come on, Frankie. <laughs> You well, do. you you know some people. You live in Los Angeles. Get me Sigourney <laughs> Weaver. Get me uh, I don't know. Get me Diane Weiss. I don't care. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll chat. We'll chat offline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, how are you doing overall? I'm doing great, Frankie. Thank you so much. It's uh sunny and beautiful and 82 degrees in Los Angeles in February. It's crazy. Yeah, you guys got some nice weather. We got some nice weather here in Rapid City. Not nearly as nice as what you guys got, but I'll take it anyway. Oh, well, I'm just glad, you know, glad you're having decent weather, too. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it makes everything better. We we did have a cold spell for a little while during the uh, uh, Rapid City uh, annual stock show last weekend. But uh, now the weather's getting back to normal, so springtime's coming soon. Well, enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> so we're going to talk about, you know, uh, this year marks the 30th anniversary of the Ghostbusters legacy, or the Ghostbusters, you know, just a whole, as a whole. Uh, mm mm-hmm. Uh, I can honestly tell you my favorite Ghostbuster movie was Part Two. You know, I've got and, and 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 it's for a lot of reasons. Uh, uh, ba- the biggest reason to me is not just because of the special effects, but I thought having a, a bad guy named Vigo <laughs> in a painting, I thought that's a pretty good concept because you don't really see that in movies that, right you know at all really. It was brilliant. Yeah, it was a great. A great effect, a great character. I, I agree. They they really developed it amazing. I love Vigo too. Yeah, I, and I still, it's you know, if I'm watching the the movie on Blu, well, on DVD, I guess because it hasn't come out on Blu-ray. But if you watch it on YouTube or even a clip or hear the voice, it still kind of freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, it's the end of the world, and Vigo's are to take over. Oh, great! I thought the ghost uh, was cat. Used to be pussy cat and rape, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and. uh... But uh, but your character you were you were uh, you got to play the character of Slimer and uh, first of all it's 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 just kind of weird just uh, to think about that when you when you really look <laughs> back at how long it's been uh, you know 1989 is what 24 years ago or 25 right. years ago or, right. and it's like you know compared to life that the way life was back then compared to how it is now did you ever right. did you ever think that uh, uh, Ghostbusters was ever gonna about anything in the future at all? Well, I you know it was a little bit different for me because I was stepping into Ghostbusters two, so I was well aware of of Ghostbusters the original and the character of Slimer, and I felt like I I kind of had some some big shoes to step in if Slimer had feet. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. it, no, seriously, that was like you know everybody loved the character. It was it was it was stepping into something that. Um, it could have probably thrown me, and I could have gotten stressed out about it had I let it. But um, um, I kind of let that go and just kind of focused on everything that they were asking me to do. But but yeah, it was it was really interesting because the original Ghostbusters nobody really knew how it would do. Um, obviously, it's an amazing film and it did really well. But you just don't know that as you're making it. But Ghostbusters too, it's like you've got the legacy of Ghostbusters. So that was it was an interesting task to kind of step into that. And I think a lot of it had to do, too, with this... uh, See, I was born in 1983, so I'm 30 years old right now. I was born in September of 1983. And so I was a little baby, you know, when when the first (laughs) one came out. But I I can remember, like, maybe not so much when the second one came out, but, like, 
I was probably in first or second grade when I really got introduced to the Ghostbusters. And we're talking like 90, 91, 92 probably when I really started knowing what they were all about. And I've been a fan ever since. And I think to me, a lot of it had to do with why I really enjoyed part two as well. Was It had to do with the marketing. Because I think the, the merchandise to me from part two was a lot cooler than the merchandise from part one. And I, that's probably just the way I feel. I don't know if you've how you feel about that <laughs> I, I i'm always looking at different um i if i if i go to a convention or talk to a fan i'm always seeing like a new slimer toy or a slimer plush doll or a slimer um you know little a, a little maquette or whatever it's it's amazing what they've made and not just slimer obviously but you know like you said every character like vigo and all the ghostbusters and lewis and janine and it, it, it's really amazing they 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 did a great job and an absolutely amazing job with Ghostbusters 2. And, and, and uh, the thing with Ghostbusters 2 is a lot of people probably thought that, you know, it wasn't going to do so well in the box office. How Did it really do pretty good in the box office or, or did it was it kind of a flop at, at, at the beginning? You know, I, honestly, I don't even know, like, financially. I, I swear, I do not know what it did, like, money-wise. But I... I, I'd like to think of it as, as a success. I mean, I think, you know, people enjoyed it. I think the characters, um, you know, had the same spirit from, from Ghostbusters 1. And, you, you know, I, I, I think of it as a, as, as a success, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I do too. Uh, it, it's basically because, you know, a lot of people always like to say, oh, the first one's better, the best. Uh, you know, they could make eight more movies like this, but the first one's always the best. <laughs> not always the true. You know, not always true. I think the effects improved a little bit from from the original Ghostbusters. It's just, that's just because it, there was more time between the two, and things just got a little bit more advanced. But um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I obviously have a special place in my heart for for two. But um, but I it, you know it, there would never have been a two if it wasn't for the brilliance of one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it kind of came around the time too. Like uh, I think either. The, the Ghostbusters came out. Ghostbusters two came out first in theater, and then a week later, Batman came out. Or am I mixing that up? Honestly, I don't remember if it if Batman just followed. Honestly, I was I was working a lot at that. You know, at that point, I was pretty crazy busy. So um, I honestly don't remember if Batman came out. You're probably right. I mean, that sounds about right, though. Yeah, because I'm also big on like the Batman series. I'm big on. Uh, well, the only Batman I actually like is the one with Michael Keaton because I think. To me, you got to go retro. Michael Keaton is one of those guys who, at that point in time, even to this day, I think he could still pull it off as Batman if they ever wanted to have him come back. They're talking about doing a Beetlejuice uh, uh, second one and uh, have him come back, you know, in more of a bigger role than he had before. Who knows? I mean, I'm just an '80s guy, a '90s kid, you know, whatever. I have a big <laughs> respect for anything to do with pop culture, and that's why we're having this interview because you know I found you uh, because. Uh, uh-huh. I found you uh, because I knew that you knew Michael Gross, and I did an interview with Michael Gross here last summer, but I was uh, just recently looking around on just kind of a Ghostbuster little mood or whatever, and I <laughs> wanted to see who I could find to interview, and uh, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about you, so I apologize for that. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> but I figure maybe I ask you for send you an interview request. The worst you can say is no, and I'm glad that you uh, said yes. Oh, I was honored. I, I appreciate the uh, the asking. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, for some of the uh, younger generation uh, uh, don't really that have still yet to see the Ghostbusters series, uh, let alone mm-hmm. those cartoons or anything. Uh, what do you ha- what, what's your message for, for for kids who have never who have never actually seen Ghostbusters at all? You know, it's funny. Most of the people that I talk to are parents that grew up on the films that are now passing the torch to their kids. So I see so many kids in 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 Ghostbusters uh, flight suits and yeah. and Stay Puffed costumes and 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 they know the lines of Ghostbusters one and two. It's crazy, and I think to myself, those are very cool parents. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, well, those are parents that are educating their kids really, really well. No, I I think it's great. Honestly, it's amazing how many fans are passing it on to their kids. But, and I and that 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 to me is it's an honor. I think it's really cool. But what if there are some parents that are like completely like I hate to use this word, but completely anal about things like from the eighties and nineties and don't want their right. kids to watch stuff like that. They want to keep their kids on current times, and that's it. <laughs> what 
What do you have to say to kid, people like that? Oh, you know, I mean, it's I, I, you have to respect a parent's decision, I guess. And I would never push a, a film, even a film that I've worked on, onto a kid if their parents don't want that. But um, but for the most part, you know, I, I rarely run into parents that have an issue with, um, and maybe it's just because of the circle of people that I run into, but yeah. I don't think I've ever heard a parent say, I don't want my child to watch Ghostbusters. <laughs> the majority of people are, I can't wait to show them the yeah. film. So that that's kind of the cool thing too. It's like the film is, um, it, it really is for the most part something you can share with your kid, and 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 they do. People do all the time. It, that that's that's what's really wonderful about it. And it's it is kind of a family friendly movie when you think about. It. Yeah, there might be some swearing here and there. Uh, probably more in the first one than than in the second one. But I I think they can be both considered family friendly because uh, if you you know it, it makes you want to believe in something. You know, they always say, you know, you're weird if you believe in paranormal activity. Well, <laughs> then I guess we're weird for the rest of our lives then, you know. And the message is good in both films, honestly. It's just a, a, a team of people that are that are together to truly do good. So it's, it's how can it be bad to pass it on to your kid? Exactly, exactly. So uh, with, with uh, you being the character of Slimer, and we'll talk about some of the other things that you've done too, but uh, I want you to kind of share the story of how... How you, you got called to play the role, mm-hmm. and then like explain kind of like how this whole thing evolved. How how you got to be Slimer, and how was it in the suit, and and just let the audience kind of experience what you experienced back in 1988 or 1989. Yeah, I um I was living in the Bay Area. I was living in San Jose, California, and uh, and I had an audition for. Um, at ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, for a film called Willow. And I, I got the film. I worked on that for a couple of days at ILM. Um, I was a troll that got eaten by a two-headed, like a Hydra monster. <laughs> um, and had a wonderful time. Um, impressed with everybody. Just, you know, everybody was so uh, talented and incredible. It, it, it was amazing. And then shortly after that, but a year after that, I get a call from my agent saying they want to see you. For a project, I'm like, what project? You know, oh, Ghostbusters too. They want you to audition for Slimer, and uh, they had remembered me um, from Willow. They had actually lost the guy that they were using for Slimer because of a schedule conflict, yeah. um, and they called me in and said I was about his build, his size, and they said they, they just put me through a few scenarios, and um, at the end of the day, I got the job. Oh wow. Uh- and I tell this story a little bit. The funny part is um, when I shot for a couple of days on Willow, the first day, um, the night before, I woke up and I ended up getting the stomach flu. Yeah. Uh, we're talking 102 degree fever, oh, throwing geez. up every half an hour. It wasn't oh, pretty. God. But um, my father, that morning that I was supposed to shoot the first day, and I was, I was going to say, how can I do this? How can I actually go? And my dad packed me up in the car. He took the day off of work, drove me. Um, and I did the day of work and then the second day of work. And had I not gone to those days of work on Willow, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's like, you know, stick with it and uh, and just know work begets work. And this job of Willow w- opened up a whole new door to to Ghostbusters at ILM. So oh, that's pretty g- cool. go for every opportunity you can. Oh, yes. And, and uh, I haven't seen Willow in such a long time. I might have to go back. I might have to go and, <laughs> and get a copy of it because I haven't. I literally haven't seen it in, like forever. I just rewatched it recently, and it's been years since I've seen it. And it's such, it's such a sweet film. <laughs> it really is. It's like it's it's got such sentiment to it. I love it. It's just it's adorable. And you got Val Kilmer who could play any character. I mean, he was Jim Morrison in The Doors. He was Batman, you know. And, who else can he play? Jeez. Oh, my gosh. Val Kilmer was brilliant in that film. Uh, yeah. And and I'm going to be honest. It's like, you know, I, I, I'm i kind of lukewarm about about him, but I, I, I thought Val Kilmer did a great job in Willow. He was just perfect for that character. Oh, of course. And and uh, what was it like to uh, to actually be, like, once you got to do the role of, of Slimer, how did it, like, ev- uh, how did it help your career? Well, it just it, it opened up some doors of meeting, um, you know, new people, Ghostbusters fans down the road, and then meeting people at conventions, other directors, producers, um, you know, social networking, meeting Ghostbusters fans who 
who live in other countries who are making films who are interested in seeing my work now and um it 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 not only have I made friends and I mean friends that I'll I'll s- s- probably stay in touch with forever but I've also made connections through it it's like it kind of grabs somebody's interest and and they you know they they stick around and see what you can do and um it's opened some doors for me I've been very lucky very lucky and, and uh, that's kind of that's cool because uh you know I, I agree I mean even with my little interview series that I started back in like well wow probably like 2006 Mm-hmm. Uh, I've interviewed probably over well over a hundred different uh, you know famous people, what we call them celebrities or whatever. I don't get gaga over that stuff anymore like I did in the beginning because <laughs> I mean unless I'm like really up close to that person that's like oh man this is like you know I don't want to pee my pants or anything but <laughs> <laughs> but it's opened a lot of doors for me too because uh, nobody knows who I am nobody you know I do this stuff on YouTube as well and I've interviewed like. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, I aired an interview I just recently did. The first interview I did was with uh, uh, Judy Belushi, uh, which is John Belushi's ex or ex-wife. Cause, oh, uh, wonderful! And I got to talk to her here earlier in, about in January, so we talked about the Blues Brothers legacy and stuff. So the fact that you got to work with you know Dan Aykroyd, who she's like really good friends with, I think, <laughs> it, and, and then even with Michael Gross and all that, it's like to me this is like a full circle type of interview. It, it well, the, like the funny part is, it's like what I was doing was on a special effects stage at Industrial Light and Magic, meaning I was by myself on a, in front of a blue screen. So everything that they shot, like um, any scene I might have had with any of the ghosts, but Rick Moranis, for instance, yeah. it's like that was already shot. And then I shot my stuff at ILM and they put the two together. So technically, I didn't have to meet any of the actors at all. My whole My whole job was self-contained in front of a blue screen. Mm-hmm. I just got lucky and I've been able to meet quite a few of the cast members and become friends with, with a few of them. Um, I'm very lucky that way. Cause technically I didn't, I, my, my work had to be done all by myself really. Yeah. Well, I can imagine. And you know, uh, what was the reaction when, when people actually started realizing that Slimer was a woman? That can't be. <laughs> Slimer's a boy. He has no penis, but he has, he, he's a boy. <laughs> so I, the, the thing I hear most is, I didn't know there was somebody in, in a costume for that character. Yeah. They thought it was completely all done in a computer. And at, at that point, you know, there really wasn't any, I don't think, any completely computer-generated characters. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're surprised that anyone was in it. And then, of course, on top of it, they're surprised that, oh, a woman played Slimer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because uh, when I first see, I've known about this for a while, but I didn't really, I didn't really do much research about it until I finally started talking to you on Facebook here just recently. Because I thought, how interesting is that when you really think about it? When people probably, and, and even when I was a little kid, I always thought Slimer was played by a guy because most of the characters, Ghostbusters, is more of a guy type of movie. So you're right. gonna get more men involved in playing these characters and stuff. Even uh, your, your, I don't know if he's a friend of yours, but uh, somebody who I also would love to talk to, Mr. Jim Fye, who actually is known for three cred- incredible roles that he <laughs> played in the Ghostbusters series that nobody even probably would have even thought about that it was a, you know, a person playing all this stuff, you know? Jim Fye and I um, became very good friends. We just had dinner, like, I don't know, about four or five months ago, I think. <laughs> um, we became good friends because we were shooting right next to each other the whole time he was shooting like the the ghost jogger and the statue of liberty and he he was so crazy busy like i was but we were there together pretty much the whole time one of the nicest people you'll ever ever meet he's amazing he's he's great i got very lucky he's he's a person that you said like you know kind of what did you what did you take from the experience he's one person that you know he's he's a great guy and a good friend and and um you know, I'm just I'm glad that I have him to call friend now after that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and, and that's and that's kind of nice. And and you've done some other things in your uh, uh, career too. I I think I saw a thing on your internet movie database page. Uh, uh, you were like, did you do a lot more of uh, TV appearances and stuff, or was that just here and there? Well, most recently, what I've been doing, um, we've my husband and I created a a web series. It's called Far from the Tree. Okay. And it's about a dysfunctional um, mother, daughter, and the family around them and how, how crazy it is. It's kind of like uh, we, we, we call it Mama's Family Meets the Office. 
<laughs> um, and it's 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 funny. And the good thing is, it's like um, my husband says he writes for his ADD, which he really doesn't have ADD, but he um, he he likes things like short, sweet. Our episodes probably the longest one is a little over five minutes. Oh. Um, and we have 15 of them um, there, and most of them are average about two and a half. So they're really easy to watch, and, and my husband writes them. He's very funny. Um, and we, we it, it took some time. We kind of uh, talked about, okay, what ideas do we have? Let's put it down on paper. Um, you know, what, what kind of characters do we want in it? And then my husband would write it. And then um, and then we got we cast the, the webisode, and we shot it. And I'm really, really proud of it. Oh, really proud of it. Well, that sounds like fun. It's, you know, and that's kind of neat too. Just the fact that yeah, that both the uh, the people and the couple, you know, the married couple, you know, like you guys are, uh, love film, you know, obviously, mm-hmm. or you wouldn't be a part of it, and that you could do it together. I think that's kind of neat uh, when married couples uh, like the same thing, and especially when it comes to film and stuff, and being able to do it together. That's right. Just, that's wonderful. We're, we both we both are actors. We met as actors, so we had that in common. And I know a lot of people have asked me, "Is was, has that ever been an issue that you both are in the industry?" And <laughs> if anything, in in my mind, it's only been a plus because you can you can share the trials and the triumphs, and we, you understand what it's like to be on a set for sixteen hours, and you know, and the excitement of of shooting. It's like it's stuff that you can share that you both can relate to. Yeah. And um and and he's and I'm not just saying this because he's paying me a lot of money to say this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, seriously, he's he's a very talented, wonderful writer and and mostly and an actor. He's he's an incredible actor too. So it it is fun. It is fun that we can come together and create something and and have fun doing it and bring friends in that are talented and that we believe in and and have a blast doing it. Oh, that's cool. What what are some notable roles that your husband has done? My husband has been um, young and the restless. He he had an under five on um, um, uh, what is that film with Leonardo DiCaprio? Oh my gosh, I oh, can't geez. believe I just forgot this. Which one? He's done so many. <laughs> um, I'm not too sure. I don't I, follow. A lot of I can't these. believe this. Um, he he played um, a, a powerful man who ends up dying and and oh. and. He, Anyway, okay, well, okay. I'm so sorry. I, I'm I'm gonna look it up because this is bothering me. I can't that's, believe I just I just fine. blanked on that. That's fine. <laughs> Jay Edgar, sorry. Jay, Jay Edgar. Edgar. Okay. Jay Edgar. <laughs> oh, so okay. He, he had a scene with with Leonardo that ended up actually, and this happens all the time. He did a scene with Leonardo that ended up getting cut, but he was on the set for a day. It was like the call sheet, which is what they give you the night before. Yeah. Um, which tells you like what scenes you're shooting and who you're shooting it with. Um. It just had a scene, but it just said Sean Spence, Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. and he was he was it, to me that that's just so cool. So he was he was all excited about that. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a big opportunity. Anything else that he's done? Is that I'm sorry. Anything else that he's done that people might know? Um. Well, act, what we're going to both be doing, which is kind of exciting, is um, at the end of the year, around September October, um, there is a there's a director producer who was a Ghostbusters fan, who we ended up, uh, we all started talking on Facebook, and he saw some of my work, my recent work, and he cast us in a movie called called Evening of the Dead, and we're shooting it in Scotland at the end of the year. Oh, wow. So, um, so see, that's another a, another door that, that opened, not only for a friendship that we made, but, you know, an opportunity that we get to work. It, because somebody... Somebody knew that I, you know, had worked on Ghostbusters and checked out what what I could yeah. do and said, "Hey, we want we want to use you." <laughs> so, so we're both going to do that. I think it, September or October we're going to end up going to Scotland. Jeez, you know, I've never I've never been overseas. I'm sure that's going to be a fun trip for you. I hope so. I've never been. Um, I've only been outside of the country to Mexico and to Canada. Oh, okay. And and that's it. And that's it. So it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting to take an international flight and see see Scotland. We're shooting. Um, a few weeks in Paris as well, oh. so um, so it'll be it'll it'll be fun. It'll yeah. be fun. You know, and that's just the thing too. It's like I that, that's what impressed me about you. I mean, you you say in the business, you know, a lot of people, you know, are, are even if they're only known for one big thing, then people then, then it's like they disappear. You know, like right. a lot of even if they're like really famous or they were really famous, like back, like like say a guy named Jonathan Taylor Thomas, so to speak. Uh, you know, that name probably hasn't been said in a long time, but. I mean, <laughs> 
uh, in the nineties, he was a big name. He was like you know the Teen Idol for everybody. Uh, he was on Tiger Be- every Tiger Beat uh, cover and all that stuff and Teen Bop and all that. But it's like he disappeared, and then right. you know he did an appearance on Last Man Standing with Tim Allen, but then he disappeared again. It's like nobody. It's like people disappear when they when they uh, get famous, or if they've only been known for one role, then they disappear. But it looks right. like but it looks like uh, you, even though you may have disappeared from the uh, from the popular eye, so to speak, as far as like <laughs> a big film like Ghostbusters Two, which was so long ago. But you're still doing it, though. You're still keeping it part of your not just your passion, but you know the the love that you have for this work called film. I mean, it's amazing that you still are staying with it after all this time. I think you do it. I think you do it because you love it. And if it's in your blood and it's something, it's not really something that you choose to do. You kind of, you have to do it because you, that's just what, that's, that's what makes you happy. And, and, and I think that's what makes me happy. And so that's why I've always, I've had, I, I, I know you have day jobs and you have things to pay the bills when you're not working. But but in general, it's like if if, if that's in, it, you don't have a choice. You just do it because that's who you are. Amen. Amen. And any <laughs> anybody who's creative um, that's struggling, that's my advice. That's my advice to them is you know just stick to what you love. Don't give up and don't let anyone tell you that it, it can't be done, because it, it definitely it can be done and uh, prove people wrong. Okay. Well, that's some good, uh, some good advice, and I want to say thank you, Robin, for let me. Uh, you know, we went past the time a little bit, a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I mean, it's no big deal. Uh, I would just want to say thank you personally. You know, from from me for, uh-huh. for coming on. I mean, this is a this is a big thing. This is a big deal to me. It might not be a big deal to you because you do interviews all the time, but this is kind of a big deal to me. You know. Oh uh-huh. well, you know, I'm I'm honored. Thank you, and yeah. uh, thank you for asking me. You're. You're you're a delight. You're oh. a delight to talk to. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm always interested in doing some type of film. I try to do stuff on YouTube and stuff, but none of my stuff really gets out there like I thought it it would. So I just kind of sit kind of back and just do some interviews and have some fun on the radio. And I have other jobs too that are my paid gigs. The radio job is just something I volunteer for at the school, but I have over ten years' experience, so it's like I might as well keep it going with what I like. So kind of like what you what you're doing with your with your career and stuff, you know, keeping it going. So. Exactly, and if, if if you like it and you love what you're doing, you're going to be good at it, you know, because if it's something that's your passion, it's like it, you're just going to excel at it, so keep it up. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that, this is Frankie Slauson and my guest Robin Shelby from Ghostbusters 2, as well as other things. Look her up on her internet movie database. And do you have a website that you want to promote at all? Um, you could definitely go to – there's there's two. Um, you could go to YouTube.com slash far from the tree series and you can check out any of the really short 15 episodes that we have up there or you could go to www.robinshelby.com as well okay all right i suggest you guys do that if you're if you're true fans of her work as slimer go support her on the internet movie database uh-huh. <laughs> thank right. you hey no problem thank you uh, robin for just uh, taking the time while you're busy day to talk to me and, thank and you frankie all right